talking about healing that come from our Parsha. We are reading Parsha Korach, and we read of a dramatic story of a rebellion in the wilderness of Korach and Korach's followers who speak up to Moshe and Aaron and say, why are you the ones who God speaks to? All of the people are holy, right? So they stage this rebellion, and in the end, Moses says, well, let's let God decide, and they tell Korach and Korach's followers to bring fire pans, bring incense, and the earth opens up and swallows up Korach and Korach's followers, and it doesn't stop there. God sends a plague to the people at that moment, and, and the people who survive call out to Moses, and they call out to Aaron, and they say, what, what is going on? God's going to annihilate the whole people. And in that moment, um, Moses tells Aaron to, to get his fire pan um, as well and to put incense in Ketoret, in this pan, and to offer up um, this incense in order to um, gain God's forgiveness for the people. So there's some interesting um, teachings about this, um, right? How do we know, how does Moses know that this incense is going to work? God has basically declared that God's going to um, annihilate the whole, whole community. So um, the commentator Rashi responds to this question um, by saying that Moses knew this because the angel of death had given the secret to to Moses that um, when Moses went up to um, up to heaven at one point that that incense uh, holds back the plague um, so uh, because we're, we're told right in this Torah portion that um, Aaron placed the incense and atoned for the people and then later on in the Parsha it says that Aaron stood between the dead and the living somehow, and the plague was stopped. Um, and so we wonder how would Aaron have even known this, this thing about the incense. So um, one thing that's really interesting is, is based on this Parsha and the power of the Ketoret, of the incense, in a lot of Siddurim of Jewish people, of Sephardi communities, of Hasidic Jewish communities. Um, and there's every day in the davening, they recite the Ketoret, the offerings of incense, um, as it's described in the book of Leviticus. So they, they read this as part of the prayers every day. And in some Orthodox Ashkenazi communities, this uh, listing of the Ketoret is also recited on Shabbat. So it continued to hold liturgical power in some way as we're grasping for everything, you know, for, for healing, um, that there's something about the incense and, and reading the incense. Um, but to me, I think there is something powerful about that line that Aaron stood between the dead and the living. And um, think about that sometimes um, for those who, who experience illness or, or who survive scary things, you know, have that experience in a way of, of standing in that, that space uh, between the dead and the living of, of, of uncertainty, of vulnerability. Um, and what kind of happens in the aftermath of, of coming out of that, out of that place. Um, I've been thinking the past few weeks, I had a, uh, a friend in, in high school named John Elliott. We used to do theater together for many years. And um, John was an incredible playwright and um, director and he, he survived a lot in his lifetime, um, and he had um, had some amputations, and he became an advocate for disability rights. Um, and every time he, he went through so many things, and his refrain was always, more life, more life, after he would stand on the precipice between life and death, and he would call out, more life, more life. Um, and um, sadly, um, we lost John um, a few weeks ago to, to complications from, from COVID, um, I hadn't 
been in touch with him in a while, but we continue to stay, you know, over social media, over Facebook. But one of the last things he said again was calling out more life, more life that he had this refrain. And um, I was thinking about that in reading about this week's Parsha of Aaron standing, you know, in between the land of the living and death, life and death, and, and in a way calling out more life and thinking about the incense, right? That it's, it's smoke that goes up in a way, sort of connecting heaven and earth. Um, and um, that perhaps Aaron, you know, in that moment, right, he's, he, after coming, coming through this experience, he's able to call out more life. Um, and so just wanted to, to offer that teaching for us from our Parsha this week as we move now into, into prayers for healing, um, this framing of, of more life, you know, um, and um, wanted to also just, I, thought, I think it's an interesting tradition to learn about as we have all kinds of practices in, in this time of vulnerability in our world to think about where different um, customs of, of healing come from. Um, wanted to just offer this, this refrain, imagining Aaron again standing um, in this liminal space um, and calling out more, more life um, and inviting us you know, to, to one another. Um, praying for the Shabbat. Um, L'chaim, may we have more life, all of us. Um, may we be granted more days um, and, and more life. I'm gonna, we're going to recite now our Misha Berach, our uh, prayer for healing. And when I pause, one, um, after reciting list of names of those in our community for whom we're praying for healing of body, healing of spirit and hearts and minds, I uh, invite you to share the names of those for whom you're praying today. Um, either by unmuting yourself or putting the names in. <laughs> 